Five years ago, they swapped life in the UK for life in the French countryside, refurbishing a five-storey, 45-room chateau to its former glory. But their adventure certainly wasn't without a few ups and downs. Dick and Angela, <laughs> it's so lovely to have you here. I mean, you look at it and we're just watching that going, gosh, what you did was just amazing, what you continue to do. So 280,000 you bought it for, 45 rooms. It had been empty for 40 years, no electricity, <laughs> no sewage, no heating. I mean, you were looking for a challenge. But this is a big one. But it's worth it. Yeah. You know, you have to have a go at life, don't you? And I yeah. think uh, when we find it, when, as soon as we saw the picture, Angel started getting a bit panicky about, we have to have this one. Right. It was the mm -hmm. one. Because obviously you've got, so you've got Arthur and you've got Dorothy. He's uh, Arthur's six and Dorothy's five, I think. Is that That's one? right, yeah. Um, so how, how do they feel about their French they live in life a chateau. and living in a chateau? <laughs> Oh, they're, lo they're loving it and they're so happy every day. Um, they're, they're involved in our work and our sort of, you know, social life and it's good. But you see, the village, the village is about a mile and a half and in the village, there's only two English speakers at all. Mm -hmm. They're both absolutely fluent in French compared to us. They're brilliant. Mm -hmm. Dorothy's got a little French accent and things and they're just oh, in, they're in the system <laughs> and um, they have the life at home. It's Britain. Mm -hmm. And it's yeah. France in the village, and yeah. uh, they love it. They're very happy. And so working in that environment, I mean, in your home environment, I mean, imagine it's a bit of a double-edged sword, because at one point you, you've got, you can take the kids to school, you've got the kids around you, Absolutely. you don't have to, you haven't got a commute. But on the other side, you never leave work. Exactly. I mean, that, that is, I guess, um, you know, part of it. But we don't, as you say, we don't have to go uh, to work and do that commute. And although we are working all the time, you know, we love what we're doing. It doesn't feel like work. Yeah. So. Our home is going from strength to strength. And when people come for weddings or they come to visit us, that it's actually a lovely place to be. And uh, right from the very beginning, you saw it in the derelict stage and it was scary to begin with. Yeah. But we always knew there was a plan to get there. Mm. And the big thing is to do it and to jump in because it, it makes no sense. Mm -hmm. Why buy a chateau that's derelict? And, but now you can see graft and just passion mm -hmm. turns and, into that. And the kids are really getting some installed in them. Work ethic, number one. And they're gorgeous, open children. When we have guests, um, you know, they always say, how do, how do the kids feel about people being in your house? The kids love it. Yeah. You know, they... And it's not like you're sharing a two up, two down. You've got 45 bedrooms. <laughs> <right. You've got laughs> they've got bedroom. places to go. <laughs> you know, yeah. they really do. They exactly. really do. The wedding business is quite extraordinary, actually, because I was thinking, you're, you're booked solid until 2020. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's that's extraordinary. But you know, the thing is, we don't do too many, and that's what... Well, you do. Us... You're booked all day. I hate to break it <laughs> to you, but you're busy. But, but, but in a year, we'll only do 12 to 15, as opposed yeah. to if you're trying to... That if you're just like doing weddings alone, you could do 40 a year. Oh, yeah. right, And wow. that means yeah. you become a sausage yeah. machine, and we're very aware that we do it, and we're still there all the time for every single part of it, and it's, it's a privilege. It's yeah. a real honour. Yeah. And is it still... I'm assuming, like, most large houses, in fact, quite a lot of small ones as well, it, there's always something going wrong. It's a constant... <laughs> It's like the fourth bridge. I mean, you'll never get it done. Um, yeah. OK, that's the answer. Yeah, we know it's always got things to do, but we have some big jobs to do. And um, we've still got a lot to do at the Shadow. The roof is there. It's hanging over us, literally. Mm. And we, we had a squall just before we left to come over to London. And the wind blew the rain up through under the slate, through windows. Uh -huh. And it was like a proper storm. And that, that, that just focused the mind a little bit and says Absolutely. there's more to do. Every window leaked. It was it was crazy, and it reminded us, sadly, that we have 50 windows um, to repair. 58. 58. <laughs> you know, I was putting it's it counting. down, rounding it down. <laughs> um, but that's a lot. We, we haven't done all the big jobs yet be because it's Still a real big investment. Yeah. So. So, you need to be there, but also you need to go and generate money to fix all of these windows and things and what you're doing because there is so much interest in the programme and in you. And I think mainly because a lot of people have these big dreams but never, never do it. And there's questions to be asked. And you're going to answer a few of these questions because you're going on tour. <laughs> so just explain what you're doing. I think it's fair to say we hear a lot of excuses from people not to do it, not reasons. There's right. very few reasons not to jump in and do what we've done. And what we want to do is we want to sort of tell people a little bit more about us. Because if you think about it, we've actually, all the things we've done sort of led us to the position where we are really well equipped to do it. And we jumped in and we dared to do it. We actually had a go at it. And there's no reason not to do it. You know, yeah, you can make excuses, but I think you have to just have that confidence. And I think when you hear our story, I was over 50 when I met Angel. And, you know, and here we are living in a chateau with two beautiful children. Yeah, and, amazing. And our tour is not 
trying to get people to just buy Chateau. OK, if they want to do that. <laughs> but it's about just, you know, having a go at something that you want to do. And it could be from starting a hobby to actually just, you know, de decorating uh, a room in a house. And, and we're just sort of saying, look, you know, we, we, had, we, grab had, life and we had fears, grab life and do it and look mm. what can happen. There must have been, because you have... Uh, you're very positive, you have fantastic smiley faces, uh, you. you're lovely, friendly people, but there must have been times when you had sunk to your knees and <sighs> said, I can't do this anymore. Never. <sighs> Never? No, 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 we're driven by passion. And, and it's a really great way to go through <laughs> life. And, and, and it is, it's very important. And, and everything, whoa, we have spats. When we have an argument, it's great. We yeah. are both passionate. We look after the kids together. We work together. We, we do everything together. We have lots of passionate discussions. We, <laughs> That's but, an argument. But, <laughs> That's code. but we, we never, we, we never sort of, as you, as you say, go, no oh, I can't, I can't do, mm. do this. Yeah. That's, not, that's not our mindset. I'm not talking about you guys, yeah. I can't do this together. I'm talking about... That. I no, mean, no, but, but the thing is, <laughs> you eat an elephant a bite at a time, and you have to actually have a plan to go through it. And the last bathroom we put into the chateau at the top of the Batagerie suite, we actually connected to the first pipe I put in before we moved into the chateau because we had a little tea off it. We thought about it, and just by thinking about having a plan, we never, it never scared us. If the roof blows off, we'll fix it. If something happens, we'll fix it because yeah. you can do anything. What, do you, what do you miss then? Because you're sort of got this beautiful <laughs> life in France now with your chair. I mean, it sounds idyllic, but there must be things that you miss. Um... We import Britain to the chateau every time we have a wedding. <laughs> Right. Because what we do is we have a whole group of people and we are surrounded by people who work for us and we've got some French people, we've got some British people living in France, mm. but we don't, we, we, we're still, our children are British, they're not French. Mm. And, we're and I think not, that's very important. Mm. And we're not trying to make anyone sort of, you know, feel a bit sick, but we've got the best of both worlds because we, you know, we come to, to England and to London, we see friends and family, we pop some baked beans and tetley tea bags in the car <laughs> and, we, and we head back. And, and when, we, when we come to England, we feel like we've come home yeah. and then when we go back to France, we feel like we've gone home. So. Can, I, can I just ask you now, uh, thinking about your thoroughly embedded in French life, mm. French village, French people around you, what do they think of us at the moment? That's Ooh. a really good question. But you see, it's hard to say because we are the only British people in our part of France. In the, in the Mayenne where we are, it's very rural and, and people don't quite understand what... They don't know that we've made Escape to the Chateau as a series. They know we're the only people that would buy the Chateau. Mm. The Chateau failed to sell at auction 18 months before we found it for £100,000. Have you just pounds. changed the subject? No, I'm just going to say no. nobody wanted what we've got. Yeah. And then when we come along, we are the British people who are doing something that they would never but dream what a, of doing. But what, no, I'm when talking we... about Britain at, from, from the French point of view, yeah. looking at the Brit... But no yeah. one mentions it to us. Don't they? That's, yeah. my, that's my point. Yeah. My the point is that, that... No, it's not the no, elephant in the room because it doesn't impact on public. They don't care. It doesn't impact <laughs> on the rural people in our part of France. And, and I think it's not political. I think rural right. France is part part of it because I don't know. They don't seem to be uh, engaged because it doesn't affect them. Yeah. You know, when we go, we're, to... we're just the odd people. That's my point. Is we're the unusual <laughs> people that did something they didn't want to do. Yeah. And because we're doing that, they just that, that's. And they the must be thrilled with you guys that you you brought something that's back for generations now. I mean, it's something it's that could have fallen done. over and yeah. it might have been the end of it, and you yeah. brought it back. Oh, that's yeah. beautiful. And we because the children are at school with friends. Their friends come with their families. We have a Halloween party coming in a couple of weeks' time, <laughs> and they'll all come in, and the, and the, the, the whole will family, be a whole mm. families come to see us, and we're just sort of getting the message out that we are quite normal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, the um, the tour, there to do it tour. Um, it's around the country from the 23rd of February, and Escape to the Chateau returns in November on Channel Four. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank, Thank you for having so us.